Okay, so now we've done the unboxing. Now we're going to do phase two, which is to install the OWC SSD drive into the MacBook Pro. Okay, so before I install the new SSD, I'm gonna do a quick test between my older MacBook Pro, which is a 2011 quad-core 2.0 with eight gigs of RAM, and it's got an OWC Mercury Electra 6G 120 gig SSD. And so we're comparing it to the boot times of the newer faster computer, which is my new quad 2.6 gigahertz with eight gigs of RAM. It has your standard serial ATA drive in it, 5400 RPM, 750 gigs. So as you can see, the SSD booted up in about 16 seconds and the newer MacBook Pro with a standard drive in it booted up in about 37 seconds. Okay, so here's a sped up version of me installing the OWC SSD drive. On the left you see my iPad, I'm watching their install videos, so I'm not going to bore you with the install directions. Get those directly from OWC, they're very handy videos that help you install RAM and drives and whatever else you want to update your Macs with. I do wish they'd change the music that they use for the install videos because there's just something about it that makes me feel nauseous when I'm doing these installs. Maybe it's just my nerves. Now, I found these little screws to be a bit of a bear, especially when I went to put them back in, and I think everyone should know this. The four screws closest to me go in at a slight angle, maybe even the side screws. So you don't want to go straight down or they won't be flush when you're done. Feel the way the surface is when you first go to unscrew them. They're not sticking out. Then feel it when you put the screw back in. If you do it at a slight angle, you're going to keep it from having any kind of screw sticking out past the aluminum. So they don't say that in the videos and that's one thing I would like to make a note about because I found they are slightly angled. Um, even if you look at the where the screws go in right now, you can see that there's a slight angle to the bottom four, maybe even the side two. So uh, I'm going to be opening mine up again. I would guess that you don't want to do this too many times because the screws can strip. They were in there really tight when I first tried to get them off. Now I've done this twice already and obviously on the older MacBook Pro I installed one of these drives. So there it is, the Mercury Extreme Pro 6. And I'm just putting the final touches on, putting in the bracket that holds the drive down. And uh, it's pretty simple. You just want to be careful and take your time. There's no rush. You also want to make sure you've got the case flushed down when, before you go put the screws back in. Then I'm just putting the final screws in. The first, the top left three, those are the longer screws. They're the ones you take off first and then you put them back in first. And uh, then you watch me do these little evil guys and you'll see that I start to struggle as I start getting around because I put one in and I'm like, it's not all the way in, it's not flush. It was nice and smooth before. What am I doing wrong? I'm not putting them in at a slight angle. The screws will go in if you go straight down but because uh, they have a little plastic wrapped around the side of the screw. But you want to do them slightly angled and then you'll have a nice flush recessed screw. And isn't that all we need in life? Then using Apple's disk utility, I formatted the new SSD drive via connecting it to my older MacBook Pro in target disk mode. You hold down the T button on the new computer, you boot it up until you see that little firewire sign bouncing on the screen, you hold your finger down. Once that's there, you can let up and you're now in target disk mode, which basically turns your internal drive into a firewire drive. Then you can hook up your older Mac to the new Mac with a Firewire cable. It will then mount on your desktop just like a normal Firewire hard drive. And now I begin the cloning process with Carbon Copy Cloner, which I highly recommend. Uh, it's very easy to use and it copies everything from one hard drive to the other hard drive, including your operating system. And now you just saw me attach the power cables to the MacBook Pros because obviously you don't want to run out of power while you're cloning that would not be good. So once the clone is complete, it's cloning about 60 gigs. 
It's not doing it at SSD speeds because this is happening over Firewire 800 and it bottlenecks at a certain speed. So uh, the final thing I'll be doing is just doing a boot test to see if the OWC Pro 6G is faster than the OWC Mercury Electra 6G, which it should be. Z cloning, G is done. Okay, and now for the boot test between the two different SSDs. On the right, we have the Mercury Extreme, and on the left, we have the Mercury Electra. The Mercury Extreme should be faster, and it boots in 11 seconds. And the Mercury Electra boots in the usual 16 seconds. Pretty impressive, both of them really, but the Mercury Extreme is that much faster, and it should be faster when reading and writing files then the Mercury Electra. So our next final test is just a two gig file being duplicated on both hard drives. Oh, and check out the shutdown times. Pretty darn quick, almost instant. And for our final test, I'm gonna duplicate a two gig video file on the SSD on the right first, which is the Mercury Extreme. Comes in at 10 seconds. Now we're going to do it on the other computer, duplicating the exact same video file. And there she goes. Mercury Electra, duplicating a 2 gig file. And she's past 10 seconds. She's past 15 seconds. Wow. So as you saw for your own eyes, the Extreme Pro is faster than the Electra. Faster on boot and faster on duplicating a file, which is basically reading and writing to the same drive. And that wraps up another MicV audio video. Thanks for watching. And uh, my next video is probably gonna be me trying to see if my MacBook Pro can stand up to my Mac Pro. My Mac Pro is a 2008. It's long in the tooth. It does have 16 gigs of RAM and a good video card, but I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for a new Mac Pro with USB 3, with 6 gigabit, with Thunderbolt, and with a new up-to-date graphics card. Graphics cards are now two years old for Apple. The Mac Pros all still have 3 gigabit. There's no Thunderbolt and there's no USB 3, only USB 2. So it's about time they really upgraded the Mac Pro. They didn't do it in the last upgrade. They just made them a little faster and kept all the other same specs. So come on Apple, give us a new Mac Pro. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.